Hello fellow crafters, Lori here from The Crafty Connection. And today I have another project for you. This project is for, uh, I'm making little table pieces. Um, they're gonna be like for a dinner, for Thanksgiving or Christmas dinners, little place settings where you could put a name on it for everybody. And then they'd also have a little gift to take home that you can use for photos or anything else. You could also use these for gift card holders, um, lots of different things you could use them for. So for what I'm using for this project is some of these, um, the Create Your Own Ornaments from Dollar Tree. Um, I have several of them. I have some little acorns. The pumpkins I had were only these chalkboard ones. Same concept, same thing, just have a chalkboard sign on them. Um, there, I have um, those two. I have a maple leaf here for like Thanksgiving dinner and then for like Christmas dinners or Christmas projects, period. I have a snowflake, I have a Christmas tree and I have a hot cocoa mug. And then I wanted a turkey. Um, because I wanted to make some with turkeys on them also for play settings and I couldn't find any of the turkey cutouts. So I bought one of these things which was like this from the Dollar Tree and I just picked off the turkey. I'm gonna pick the other one off too eventually. And how I got that off was I just used a butter knife and just kind of loosened it up and then it popped right off. So that's um, how I got that off. And then I'm also going to be using um, some paint, some Mod Podge, some glue, some wood glue, and some hot glue. For mine, I'm using some glitter. You're going to need some clothespins. I'm using the medium sized Crafter Square clothespins. These are in the Crafter Square section. I'm going to be using some of these Dollar Tree Tumbling Tower Blocks. And I, for mine, I'm using some of the lightweight spackling from the Dollar Tree. And that's to fill the holes in, which I've done here, and I'll show you how I did those. And then I'm going to be using some scrapbook paper, and then maybe some ribbon or twine. This is optional. This is just something I'm going to use for some of mine. All right, so what I did first was I got the ornaments out and I took some painter's tape. You could use any kind of tape you have, clear tape, uh, painter's tape, masking tape, whatever. And I just put the tape on the back of the hole on these little ornaments, like so. And then I took the lightweight spackling and I just used my finger to fill in the hole here. I put this on because it gives it something to sit into so the hole gets stayed, stays full. Then I let it dry and then I just sanded it smooth and then I took the tape off the back and then our hole is completely filled. Because for these we're not going to be making ornaments with this particular project and we didn't need the holes. Okay, next step I'm going to do is I'm going to paint and I'm going to do different things with these. I'm going to make my turkey. I'm probably just going to use the antique wax for him and maybe some dry brushing. I'm not sure. Um, the tree here, I'm going to use some green. I'm using Craftsmart acrylic paint in the color of campground. For my snowflake, I'm going to be using the Waverly chalk paint in white. And for this, I'm going to put some of the glitter on. And for my leaf here, I think for this one, I'm just going to use, it already has some paint on it, but I can cover that. And I'm thinking of using the rose gold metallic paint for that. Uh, for my pumpkin, I'm going to use some orange. I haven't, I didn't pull that one out, but it'll be some kind of an orange. And then for my acorn, I'm going to be using some of the apple barrel nutmeg brown as well as some uh, the Craft Smart Espresso and the Apple Barrel Khaki. 
and I will show you how I do that one also. Some of these I'm going to just paint because it's it's obvious. Um, and other ones I will show you on camera because I'm going to do a few different things. The coffee mug is where I'm going to use my scrapbook paper and some glitter here too. So let me get uh, everything set up and I'll be back and we will start. Alright, so I went ahead and did some painting because nobody wants to sit here and watch me just paint. So let me show you what I've done so far and um, show you some of the techniques or, or things that I've done. So first I just took the hot cocoa mug and I, excuse my hands are full of paint, the, um, I just gave it a coat of the white chalk paint by Waverly on both sides. And I did put two coats up here where the whipped cream is. And with that, I painted a one of the clothespins white. And I have one of the tumbling tower blocks white. And for the tree, I just painted the stem with the espresso brown. And I painted the star yellow. And for that, I have a just uh, I put antique wax on a Jenga block as well as the clothespin. This one I'm going to be putting scrapbook paper on. Okay, for the snowflake, I painted it white on both sides along with the Jenga block and the clothespin. This one I'm going to be putting glitter on. For the leaf, I ended up using this Deco Art Extreme Sheen copper color because I thought it looked a little more fallish than the rose gold and I just painted it on both sides as well as the Jenga block and the clothespin. That one's still a little damp. And then for the acorn, let me move over to the pumpkin. For the pumpkin, I painted it with Waverly chalk paint in the color pumpkin. So I painted that on both sides and I painted the stem with the espresso brown. And then I dry brushed some of the espresso brown around the edges and on the pumpkin. This block already, I glued it on first to see if, if I needed one or two blocks. So we'll get to that part. And then I painted a clothespin and distressed it also with the brown. And then for the acorn, I painted it on both sides with the espresso brown. And I put espresso brown also on the stem. And then I painted the top of the acorn with the apple barrel khaki. And I am going to dry brush this one for you on camera so you can see how I did it like with, for the pumpkin. And then for the turkey, um, this one was bigger because if you remember we took it off of that um, this piece here. So I put the antique wax on the whole turkey and I put the blocks on front and back and put the antique wax on that and then I took that uh, extreme sheen copper that I used on the leaf and what I did, uh, if you can see, that this just kind of has a... So I just took a little of that paint and I put it... Let me just show you exactly how I did it. I took a, a baby wipe and I just stuck my finger in it like that and I put some of the paint on the end. And I just took it and I just swirled it around those feathers, kind of mixing it in just to give the turkey a little color on his feather. And then I also put a, just a dot of black paint on both sides for his eye. And I did a antique wax clothespin for that one. And, oh, and the cocoa mug is also gonna get scrapbook paper as well as the tree. So to do the dry brushing, what I want to do here is first I'm going to take some of the khaki, the apple barrel khaki, and don't need much, 
and I'm going to dip my brush in it and then dab off most of it. I know many of you have seen me do this, but for those that haven't, this is how, what, how I do it. I take my, I'm using a, they call these chunky brushes from Dollar Tree. They come three in a pack. And I just lightly go around the acorn. Just giving the ends of it a little distressing. It just gives it a little color, kind of outlines the, the acorn. I'm going to do that on both sides. And if you do it and you're, you're heavy handed and you don't like it, you can easily just wipe it off or go back over it with some more of that antique wax like I just messed up right there. So I'm just going to grab my baby wipe and wipe it off and start again. I'm going to put a little bit on the, the stem. I think it just gives it a really nice outline. And this you don't have to do at all. This is just something I like to do. And then I'm going to take and just kind of lightly go across my acorn. Just kind of distressing it a little bit. That's all for that part. And I'm going to do the same thing on this little um, Jenga block here that will be on it. This one you only have to do the one side because the other side is going to be glued down. And like I said, you don't have to do this at all. It's just personal preference. And then for the top part of the acorn, I'm going to take a little bit of the Espresso brown. Same thing. And I'm just going to lightly go around the part where the khaki is. And excuse my dog. She's ready for her afternoon snack. Her milk bones. And then I'm just going to dry brush over it. Same thing on the back. So that's what we have. Just gives it a little color. And that's exactly what I did on the pumpkin. I just went around it and dry brushed on it. Right, so that's that technique. So next we're gonna put our blocks on or our pieces on and I'm gonna do the paper for these two and then we'll move on. So let me get this stuff put up and I'll be back and we'll continue on. Okay, so let me show you what I'm gonna do with these two. Um <clears throat> Just to um, kind of recap here. So each piece you do should have one of the Jenga blocks and one of the clothespins. So I already put the paper on the hot cocoa piece. I have not done the tree. I will do that one on camera to show you how I do it. So I'm going to take these two pieces because these are the two I want to add glitter to. So I'm just going to take some Mod Podge. Sorry guys, and put it on the snowflake. I want to get it on all the parts of the snowflake. So I'm just going to paint it on there. And I am 
putting a nice amount, not, well, it is kind of globby. And that's fine. Because I want my glitter to stick. So I'm just making sure I get it on all the ends, sides, the corners, the whole bit. And then I'm going to move it off of that mess. And then I'm going to get my glitter. I have two different ones here. So I think I'm going to go with the bigger one. This one has a, a pink iridescent color in it. I'm just going to sprinkle it on, getting every end piece. And let it sit there for a second. off the extra. You can kind of see. And then I'm going to set that one to the side. Glitter is I'm going to cut one of my <clears throat> pieces of parchment here. The one that has all the glitter. <clears throat> I'd actually already folded it to be able to put the glitter back in the extra not anticipating the Mod Podge, so I'm going to get this, make a little crease at the bottom on one end, so it's easier to get it back into my bottle. Turn it over, and then for my hot cocoa mug, I just want it at the top, but I don't want the pink in this, so I'm going to use the other glitter. So same thing here, I'm going to put the Mod Podge just on the, I'm going to Mod Podge the whole thing, but for now, I just want the whipped cream area. So what I'm doing is kind of going down a little bit over the paper, getting all of the edges again. And this one I'm going to open it. See that there on the camera. Set that one to the side. And same thing here. Put my glitter back. Okay, 
I'm going to clean this up real fast, get me a new piece of parchment so I don't have glitter everywhere, and I'll be back in just a sec. Alright, so once this has, has dried on here, I'm putting another layer of Mod Podge over the top of the glitter to keep it from falling off everywhere. Now once this dries, it'll, it'll be shiny again. Just making sure I get all the edges. And then I'm going to go ahead and kind of wipe the glitter off my brush. And then I want to put some on the whole cup where I put the paper on. Just to make sure that the paper doesn't come up. Making sure I get the edges really good. Not really good as in sopping wet, but covered. And then one more, kind of where they come together. The glitter and the paper. Okay, and then I'm going to let that dry. And then while that's drying, I'm going to go ahead and do the tree, the paper on the tree. not a fan of glitter it goes everywhere so how I did the paper for the cup I just cut it out and I glued it on and for the tree you just take your piece now make if you're using a pattern paper make sure that it's going in the direction that you want it to go and then I just lay my tree down and I trace it on the back side of the paper I don't need the star. Nor do I need the tree stem or stump. So cut that out. So I'm just going to continue to cut it out on the lines that I traced. my dog snoring in the background. She's obviously super tired today. So anyway, just cut it out. And then find a little trash pile there. And I'm going to set mine on my tree to see how it fits. Which it is a little big, but I'm going to sand it off, so that's okay. If you weren't going to sand it off like I did on the cup, I just cut it. You want to cut it in just a little bit more so it, it fits on your tree. And then I'm just, oops, that's chapstick. That's not going to glue very well. Anyway, I'm just taking a glue stick. It's Jot brand I got from the Dollar Tree. And I'm just going to put a 
nice coating on this, pretty thick. Making sure I get the edges. And I'm gonna put my paper on there. And press it down. You can do both sides of this or just one, whatever your preference is. I'm just going to do the, the one side. And as you can see, I have a lot of paper going over here on this side. So I'm going to take the little sander. And this sander I got on... Amazon, a little um, zip sander or finger sander. Comes with all these attachments. I'll put a link below if you're interested in that. And all I'm going to do now is go along these edges in a downward motion. Getting off a lot of that excessive paper. As you can see, well, I don't know where the piece went to, but it pulls it literally. Right here we go, right off. So you get a nice clean edge. Just make sure you're going in a downward motion, otherwise, you'll pull your paper up. there. And then I'd like to go back over it and just kind of going down but at an angle just to get a little of the, the raw wood to show. And that's just my preference and check the back make sure you got all your paper off which we did okay and then you can run some Mod Podge over your paper to make sure it's in there or on there nice just gives it a nice seal. Now I will tell you on this particular one, all the other ones came out just fine, but where I put the wood spackle, hopefully you can see, the hole didn't uh, cover all the way. So you can always take a, a little half bead, a gem, something, and put it up there, which I will once this dries. So that's done. So then the last thing to do is put them together. And I have already put some together, which I'll show you while these other ones dry. So on the pumpkin, I put the, this was on first, I put the Jenga block at the bottom and making sure that you get this flush, otherwise it won't sit. And then I put the clothespin on, and you want to put it on upside down, so where you pinch it, it's here, and where it opens is at the top. And I just added a little Spanish moss and some pit berries on that one. 
and to give you an example of what happens when you don't put these flush, I put the black at the bottom of my leaf and I did put my leaf at an angle. So this is how it looks. And the bottom of the leaf is sticking out from the Jenga black so it wasn't sitting straight. So I ended up just adding another Jenga black here and painting it to match so you can see. And then I put the clothespin on again with the, op the opening at the bottom. And then just added a little orange raffia bow for that one. On the acorn, I added a little twine bow and I wrapped some twine around the stem. I, my acorn sitting at an angle so it'll sit like this. And I put the Jenga block and the clothespin. And then for the turkey, because this one was bigger, I put one Jenga block on the front. And I put two on the back. You probably I probably only needed one. But that's how I did it. And I gave him a little orange raffia bow too. And then I have to put the backs on these and they are still drying. So let me go get something I want to put on my tree up here and I'll come back and we'll put the other three together. So I'll be right back. Alright, so I just went and got a little rhinestone that I'm going to put a little dab of glue on the star and stick the rhinestone on there it's kind of big because I didn't have a smaller one but you can use whatever you have so I just stuck that on there to cover up that hole all right, and then to put the back on for these, okay. no, I chose this one for this. So the tree is a little weird because you have to put it where the stem is. So it's going to be a little different, I guess. So what I'm going to do to make sure I get the placement on it how I want it, I'm just going to put a little line on each side of the Jenga block and a little line on the top. So I make sure I put it where it needs to be. So I'm just going to run a bead of glue along here between my lines. And I'm going to put my Jenga block, line it up with the lines I made. press it down and then take my clothespin making sure that this is the side you pinch right here the side that opens make sure this side is facing up and I want to take it all the way up about halfway up to where that star is so you can see there you don't need the glue string so that way when you press it here this part opens okay so we have the tree and guess what I did I did it again I didn't put it all the way down here so uh, to fix that, I guess that's a good thing that happened. I can show you how I'm going to fix it. I'm going to get another Jenga block. And then I'm going to put it directly over this one.
line it up there nicely and evenly. So I just have two back there and then that should hold it up nicely, which it does. And then I'll just stain this so it's all matching. And there's that. And then this one is dry, well, not quite dry, but you can see the shine is coming back there in the glitter. And these are both still a little damp, but I think I can go ahead and put the pieces on. So I'm going to take my Jenga block that I painted white. Again, these have to line up flush with the bottom. Otherwise, they won't sit, which you just saw. Run my little hot glue here. Now I'm gonna make sure that's flush. Hold it down. Close pin again. Pinch your side at the bottom. Open facing up. Put my glue on it. stuck a little there but it's okay so here's what the back looks like and then that should just sit oh. Oh, did I do it again <laughs> oh I did okay guess what guys I did it again so oh my goodness it's early in the morning if you can't tell all right, so I'm gonna do the same thing I just did with the tree. Add the other jingle block and then I'll paint it to match. I cannot believe I just did that twice. Oh well, it is what it is. And now it sits up perfectly. And then for the snowflake, you can see hopefully there that the shine did come back once the Mod Podge started to dry. And I'm going to flip it over, get my Jenga block, and this time I'm going to put my glue on the bottom two parts of the snowflakes that I'm putting in the block. Let's see if I can get this one flush. So you know what guys, I think that one's flush, but it didn't want to set up good. So I think with trial and error here, it's probably better to put two of the Jenga blocks together in the backs. You know, the pumpkin one sits up just fine. So. Who knows? But anyway, so I just added the other Jenga block. And for whatever reason, this one's not wanting to sit. Oh, there it goes. Okay. This wasn't sitting correctly. Put my clothespin on. Again, with the opening side going up right. all right so there we go so we have the snowflake sure what's going on here there we go we have the snowflake we have the tree we have the leaf we have the hot cocoa cup the pumpkin the acorn 
and the turkey. Turkey's bigger, obviously, because we used it off a different component. But this is just the idea for you. So, say you're having Thanksgiving dinner, and you have quite a few guests, and, you know, if it's like my house, people are always like, well, where do I sit? Which, you know, so you can make little name tags, for example. And I'll use the leaf here, stick the name tag in the paper clip. And then, boom, I know this is where I'm sitting. You can set these right on the plate or at the play setting. So that way there's an idea. Or if you're at a bigger function and you have more than one table, you could always just like write the table number on it. I didn't put the paper clip on the turkey. Or not the paper clip, the clothespin. I gotta work on that star snowflake but anyway my point is so boom there would be table number five that you could set these right in the middle and then people know that's the table so let's say you have a guest you have five or six people at your table and each person has a place card you could so This one, let's say, is mine for dinner. So I have this sitting on my plate or at my spot, so I know this is me. So this also gives this person a cute little gift to take home that you could use for different things. You could put photographs in here. Um, I have one here, let me grab it. photograph of my one of my cats but you could take a photograph and just display it on a shelf or on a desk tear tray whatever you wanted to do it could be a photo holder and this is peach fuzz by the way or this is not a gift card, but you could always gift gift cards in these. So there's their gift, and then they got a cute little photo holder or whatever you want to use it for. People could put these on a desk with a business card in them. Just lots of different things you could do with these. These are great for tiered trays. I made them for place card settings at tables, but you could use it in any way you wanted to and like I said then your guests have a little gift to take home so I will I'm gonna finish painting the the backs of the pieces that I added to it and I will post pictures at the end of the video um, another suggestion just so that I thought of offhand it's like if you're doing a wedding you know so budget-friendly wedding idea they these come in all kind of different shapes holidays seasons whatever so you could always get like a little bell shape star shape whatever and paint it up litter it up put it in the table middle for a table number um, use them for wedding guests you know and these are just really cute DIYs that are so versatile you could use them in so many different ways decorate them how you want just have fun with them all right guys i hope you enjoyed this if you did please give it a big thumbs up it really helps my channel please comment below and if you haven't already subscribed i hope you will consider subscribing to my channel until the next video have a great one